Welcome to Geology 492. That's Geology of the Southwestern U.S. I don't know what your background is, whether you're a geology major or maybe a natural science major or something else. Uh, this class tends to attract um, a wide variety of people because it's only one credit. And whatever your background is, there'll be something here for everyone. Now, if you look up in the upper right corner, if you've opened this in Blackboard, you'll see that it says YouTube. And if you click on YouTube, it'll take you to YouTube, and you'll be able to open this up to a full screen size and be able to see this awesome lecture in all its big screen glory. Well, this first week, we're going to get a chance, for those of you that haven't had an online uh, course with me, you'll be able to see what the procedure for the semester is going to be like. You'll basically be watching these video lectures and then taking a short quiz. And in this class, the, the, the quiz is downloaded. You fill out these areas, and then you uh, upload it back into Blackboard. So that shot there, that's, uh, that's a picture taken in the Grand Canyon. Not the normal, if you've been to the Grand Canyon, this is typically not the place you've gone. Uh, this is over in the western end of the Grand Canyon in a place called Toroweep. Some, uh, some maps show it as two weep. Anyway, it's the western Grand Canyon, and it's a, you're looking uh, east there. Uh, and we'll get uh, back to that, what the sort of layers are. But that's a classic shot of, of, of when people think of southwestern uh, U.S. geology. Of course, it's part of a region where the rocks are mostly flat, so you get really good stratigraphy. Um, not too much complication, so uh, most people really like it. Well, let's get going. Okay, so I like to start every lecture describing what the objectives are. And um, again, in this lecture, we're, we're going to look at, uh, describe the learning objectives for the class in general, and also the format it's, it's presented in, which again is this sort of lecture format online, um, followed by a quiz. Um, What's going to be expected from each stu student in order to satisfactorily pass the course? Well, to watch the weekly video lectures and uh, take those quizzes. Now, provide an overview of the general region within the southwestern U.S. that this course will focus on. And then finally, we're going to summarize the, the geologic time scale and the important time intervals that we'll be covering throughout the semester, or basically the kind of rocks we'll be looking at, what, what, what age ranges are they. So, from the course catalog, this, this, uh, this class is basically, to, uh, I need to present you with a well-rounded introduction to the geology of the southwestern United States. And I'm going to emphasize the regions that adjoin the, where Nevada, California, Arizona, and Utah all come together. Now, this class was originally designed to provide important background information for students that, that go on a field trip with me to the region. Every other year I've been leading, since I, I started working at UAA, a field trip to this part of the world. And the reason I started the trip was after I taught courses like petrology and structural geology, I realized that, that I needed to take the students somewhere where I could show them lots of different kinds of rocks and structural settings to give them a good background. Um, things that we couldn't cover during the year in Alaska because of the weather or access. So anyway, the, 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 even if you don't go on the field trip with me, and of course most people don't because I can only take about 10 people at a time, um, you know, once you've completed this class, any student should have a general understanding of the basic geology of the region, and that's really good because then you know, when the time comes for you to actually go to this, this part of the world, which a lot of people do, you know, you'll know what's going on, or at least you'll have a decent background. Anyway, the picture on the right there, that's a, a, a basaltic dike, a little over a meter wide. It's very young, um, about four million years old, and it's cutting up through gravels. And those gravels are Cenozoic aged, so they're young as well. And uh, they're associated with normal faulting in the, in the production of basins throughout the uh, southwest 
when the region began to pull apart. And these are all things we're going to talk about in the class. So it's very well exposed along the road, and students get a really good example. You know, it's a really good example of of how uh, magmas that started in the mantle uh, make it to the surface. Well, as far as how the class is going to operate, you know, this class is only one credit. And, and so what do I want you to do? Well, I want you to watch these short weekly video lectures, and I'm hoping to keep them short. Uh, again, this, this class is only one credit, so I'm not going to try to pack three credits worth of material in on you. Um, so don't panic. I want you to, after you're done with the lecture, you're going to go back and you're going to fill out these short weekly quizzes, and they are directly from what I've lectured on. Now, these are fillable PDF files, so you're going to download the PDF out of Blackboard, and typically you need to get it into your computer, um, not just put it um, displayed in your browser. Then you'll be able to fill it out. You'll be actually able to click on it and fill in the blanks electronically, and this is very common these days with, with you know, things you need to do different kinds of files. Anyway, then you're going to resubmit them. You're going to upload them back into Blackboard. Uh, you'll see how to do that in the, in the thing. If you have trouble, talk to me or somebody else. Anyway, I'll get them graded and week by week you will see your credits climb and you will do great. Okay, now I'm also going to be at times posting readings. These will be like field trip guide book sections or, or you know, short articles or something that relate to the areas we're talking about. You don't have to read that stuff. It's not going to be on the quiz per se, but you know, you 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 will um, you know get more out of it if you do. So for everyone, read the stuff if you feel like it. If not, no worries. Now, if you're going on the field trip with me, make sure that you download these readings you know, get them, get them into a notebook or some sort of small binder and then bring them along with you because this is going to be your references that, that you'll have. Anyway, you'll get a lot more out of the trip that way. And then if you're not going on the field trip, um, you know, in the end, remember you learned something and uh, you have access to all these materials uh, in case you ever do decide to go. Well, there's a map of the lower 48 with all the different rock types and ages displayed. Now, that make a great map for the wall, and actually these are for sale somewhere. You can look for them on the web. They're printed out like this. Beautiful. Anyway, you can see all the different patterns, and, and, and the longer you go on in geology, some of this should make sense to you. In fact, most everybody should have taken a class in historical geology where the history and development of North America is discussed. Now we're going to be focusing on mainly here in the West, and you can see there the colors sort of have smaller fields, and there's a lot more chaotic um, um, patterns rather than places like along the Gulf Coast or in the central states. Anyway, in fact, we zoom in, we're, we're really talking about the region right about here. And um, I'll, I've got another map to, to look at for that. But anyway, that's the region we're going to be thinking about. And, and the reason it does get chaotic in the West, of course, the West is an active margin. Uh, lots going on, lots of, lots of structural geology, folding, faulting, deposition, mountain ranges, you know, that sort of thing. So here's a physiographic map. Um, basically shows landforms. And there's some striking you know, patterns here. Uh, uh, first of all, when you stand back like this, you can see that, of course, this is the water, right? This is mostly California over here. Anyway, they've got the San Andreas Fault sort of mapped in there. Uh, this block here, this large sort of long linear area, that's the Sierra Nevada mountain range, which on the field trip we actually end up right over against it. Running from the Sierras, if you go to the other side, the next large mountain range uh, over in the east, this is the Wasatch Mountains in Utah. This is this Great Salt Lake, okay, and between the Wasatch Mountains and the Sierra Nevada Mountains lies this area of highly extended, you see all these little fingers running down through here, they're, uh, well, they're basically stretch marks uh, uh, of the planet, 
and that is the basin and range. And it extends all the way down and then all the way down under here into Arizona and into Mexico. Now, between the basin and range and south of the Wasatch, you see this large area here, which is sort of featureless, and that's the Colorado Plateau. So the Colorado Plateau and the basin and range, um, along with a little bit of the Sierras, is what we're going to focus on in this class. Some of the other features on this map you might recognize, well, there's the Great Valley of California, the big, the big shallow valley where you can see a lot of farming. This is the Cascade Mountain Range. This is the Snake River Plain with Yellowstone over here. And then, of course, sort of various parts of the Rocky Mountains running all the way down here into New Mexico. Pretty cool, huh? So, making it a little simpler on maps, um, this map on the left breaks down uh, the major and sort of minor geologic provinces of the West. And in fact, our lecture next week is going to be the overview um, of these Western geologic provinces. So we're going to kind of zoom in on, on the Basin and Range and the Colorado Plateau. But here they are highlighted for you. And again, I told you the Basin and Range extends all the way south, right, through southern Arizona, New Mexico, all the way into Texas and then again way down into Mexico. It's a huge region and it all together is, is, is because of uh, basically pulling apart. And then again the Colorado Plateau, well it's famous for really doing nothing actually. It's really thick um, and the rocks there are more or less, more or less uh, flat. So that's good, that's simple. We like that. Simple is good. Here's a diagram from the Structural Geology Lab textbook. And here it shows the Colorado Plateaus labeled in here, the Basin and Range, and the Sierra Nevada block. And then what I've done is added in several locations that we go on our field trip. Uh, Las Vegas is located right around here in an area of both strike slip and normal faults. Here's St. George, Utah. That's where I live when I'm not in Alaska. And St. George is located on the very edge of the basin and range where it is comes in contact with the Colorado Plateau. And in fact, they call this the transition zone. And the transition is that transition from basin and range to the plateau. It's not just one line. You can see there's, there's some large faults here, but then there's some other faults, and eventually you get into fully basin and range. Then there's a place called the Reveille Range, which is uh, sort of a landmark for us. And those of you going on the field trip, we will actually camp there one night. And then over here in the western part, up against the Sierra Nevada Mountain Range, is the region of Mammoth Lakes, California, very famous for its uh, skiing. But that's where we'll find some good volcanic features. Uh, Death Valley is located in about right here. And then, again, Las Vegas. Now, if we take a look at our road map, right, we see that Las Vegas is where our trip starts and ends, and that's where I begin this road log. And, 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 and you know, of course, because this is the easiest place for me to meet people and fly in, this green area over here extending to the, to the east of Las Vegas is the Colorado River and the Grand Canyon, and then it becomes Lake Mead. Um, we will drive up, this is Interstate 15, there's the corner of Arizona and we actually will come up and stay the night in St. George. From St. George we travel south and the roads are not shown on this map because they are uh, dirt roads. Anyway, you travel on dirt roads south of St. George to this place called Mount Trumbull and, and, and right in there is where we actually access uh, the Grand Canyon at Toroweep and that's where the first photo I showed you of this lecture was taken. Now the regular part of the Grand Canyon, and I've got some some places to sh I'll got some maps to show you in a second. Anyway, that's further to the east of here. Uh, we return to St. George. We go back up in here, and there's Zion National Park. We stay there. That's on the Colorado Plateau. From Zion National Park, we take off from Cedar City, and we move uh, west, and we drive basically the entire length of the Basin and Range in two days. We, 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 we travel out to here, which is where the Reveille Range is, right here in the center, and we camp there. It's too far to get across in one day, and then we pick it up the next day 
and we continue on through the garden spots of Tonopah, we kind of end up over here, and then finally right in this region is where Mammoth Lakes is, right over here. So it's an area of about oh, 600, five to 600 miles wide, and, um, and then from there we will, we will return down this highway 395, passing back through Death Valley or through Death Valley in the first place, and then ultimately end up back in Las Vegas. This trip takes us around 10 days. Combining these two places, we see that there's Las Vegas, here's St. George, there's the Grand Canyon region over here, there's the Reveille Range, which is about right there on this map. Going to the other side, there's the Reveille Range. Working our way west, we come over into this region, which is the Mammoth Lakes region, and then back through Death Valley and back to Las Vegas. Now, geologic time, what sorts of rocks, what sorts of age ranges are we going to see? Well, these two panels, the one on the left shows you the complete time scale for Earth. Starts out at 4,600 million years, and I put that over here just to remind you if it wasn't completely visible, kind of dark pink down there. Anyway, 4,600 million is the same as 4.6 billion. So we're not going to see anything that old. The oldest rocks that we will see, which are in the bottom of the Grand Canyon, now we don't get to them down there. We can see them, but we can't get to them. We actually will see the same rocks near Las Vegas where they're exposed in an uplifted mountain range. And those are about 1.8 billion years old, so that's 1,800 million, and those range somewhere between 1.8 to about 1.4. They're both metamorphic rocks and uh, igneous rocks, plutonic igneous rocks. So 1.8, that's still pretty dang old. And then the rest of the Grand Canyon, right, starts, the bottom of the Grand Canyon starts here in the Paleozoic. So, so the flat-lying sediments that, that people recognize from the Grand Canyon, and I'll show a picture of the Grand Canyon in a second, that starts way up here, which is down here at the bottom. So this is just an expansion, right, of the upper part of this scale. So the rocks in the Grand Canyon go from the Precambrian, and then we cross the boundary, which is the Great Unconformity, if you remember from historical geology, the Cambrian is where the first abundant life appears in rocks on Earth, and those rocks are in the Grand Canyon. And then we see rocks from the Cambrian all the way up to the Permian exposed in the Grand Canyon. So, and then from the Permian in the Mesozoic, we see these rocks exposed in Zion National Park. And then finally, across Nevada, um, and into California, we'll see these rocks exposed. Um, all of these too, but 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 Cenozoic rocks as well. Most of the Cenozoic rocks we're going to see are not going to be sediments. Um, they're going to be volcanic rocks. So here's a shot, figure, graphic, whatever that I've taken from an intro textbook. And you can see a beautiful example, right, of, of this sort of Grand Canyon geology, flat lying for the most part sediments that have not been too disturbed since they were deposited almost 500 million years ago. Down here in the very bottom of the canyon, the inner gorge, we're going to see these, these very old 1.8 to 1.4 billion year old rocks, right? Those again are metamorphic and igneous. Then on top of those, right, we actually have some old Precambrian sediments in the Grand Canyon too. That's these tilted ones here, but we won't see those in the western part of the Grand Canyon where we go. Those are not exposed. But then all of these rocks on top are exposed and we can see them in the cliffs. The lay of the land. Uh, Las Vegas lies a little bit to the west of where I've put this blue dot. There's Lake Mead, and La Las Vegas is just to the west of Lake Mead. There's St. George in southern Utah. This is about 120 miles. It takes, on I-15, about two hours. 
to get from Las Vegas to St. George. Now from St. George, we are going to travel south, right, from St. George and actually on dirt roads and reach uh, the part of the Grand Canyon right around here that we'll be going to in Toro Week. Now if you want to go to the regular part of the Grand Canyon, that's this part, that's the, the main part of the Grand Canyon, you can reach it either by going over the north rim and in from the north or traveling around through Flagstaff and then coming up from the south. That's the way, that's where most of the tourists who visit the Grand Canyon get to the canyon. <clears throat> so the Grand Canyon, this is a really nice graphic and this, this shows uh, uh, the, the layers of sediment of the Colorado Plateau starting at the Grand Canyon and then going from the Grand Canyon upward to the very Cenozoic rocks uh, that lie up near uh, a place called Bryan Head in southern Utah. And Bryan Head is a, uh, a ski area that sits at almost 10,000 feet. So the neat thing here is, is that on a short trip around the west, so here's Bryce Canyon. This, this is the same map I just showed you, just a little bit smaller. So they've got the Grand Canyon, Zion, and Bryce. All three national parks are in close proximity to each other. And in the Grand Canyon, you'll see those Precambrian to Permian rocks. In Zion, you'll see the upper Permian to the end of the Jurassic, actually all the way up into the Cretaceous. And then over at Bryce, you'll see rocks that start from the Cretaceous and go all the way up into the tertiary. So you can kind of hit it all. And that's, of course, what most people are doing in the summer, visiting those parks. Here's the main part of the Grand Canyon, the, the famous part that you would see if you went to the south or north rim during the summer. Um, way down here in the inner gorge, you would see those uh, Precambrian rocks and then the, the Paleozoic rocks, right? The top of the rim of the Grand Canyon is Permian, and this is limestone up here. Um, and so the different types of rocks that exist, this was, of course, a beach at one time, and it was an ocean, and it was rivers, and then it was a desert, and then it was back to, to uh, oceans again. That's the way it goes, and we're going to talk about this stuff in uh, week three when we talk about Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic paleogeography. So again, there's, there's Zion National Park, there's Bryce National Park, and there's Grand Canyon. We don't make it to Bryce on our field trip for two reasons. One is we'd run out of time. I love the geology of the Colorado Plateau and I would love to stay there and just go from park to park to park. The problem is all we're going to see is flat-lying sedimentary rocks. So once we've kind of done that and we've covered that ground, it's time for us to move west where the rocks get more complicated and we get different types of rocks. But on our field trip, we'll leave St. George, and this is a great spot to go. It's about 80 miles, 70 to 80 miles on a dirt road, and we end up down here at Toroweep. And Toroweep, this is the view you get. Instead of that really wide canyon, the canyon is much narrower. The rocks are a lot harder here. And this is true no matter where you go in the west, that the rocks are going to change depending upon where you are because the environments changed during the time that they were deposited. It might have been shallower ocean or deeper ocean. So again, it, it, even the same rock uh, uh, formation will change. Uh, the neat thing about Toroweep is you can actually get right here on the edge and look right down to the bottom. That's something you can't do in the main part of the Grand Canyon because the rocks are a lot more ledgy. Anyway, up here is Permian. Down here at the bottom is Cambrian. So you're still seeing that entire Paleozoic section. Something that the regular part of the Grand Canyon doesn't have, that Toro Week does have, is that last picture was taken from about right up in here looking to the east. This is to the west of that photo, and what you see is voluminous basaltic volcanism, which was widespread in this region in the very latest part of the Cenozoic, and volcanoes actually erupted on the rim of the Grand Canyon and poured lavas, these large lava falls that poured down the canyon walls and actually dammed up the Colorado River. Spectacular. And uh, that's the kind of stuff you can see in the western part of the park. 
Where are all the volcanoes coming from? Well, it's coming from the chopping into the Colorado Plateau of the Basin and Range normal faulting. So, again, Grand Canyon, Zion, and then if you could take it, again, you're there on your own, you're going to head up and you're going to go to Bryce, and you're going to see all the, the thicknesses here um, of the sedimentary rocks of the Colorado Plateau. For us, it's going to be time to move move uh, west. Um, let's see, maybe I'll zoom in on that picture of Zion. Yeah, check that out. Okay, a couple of thousand feet of nothing but windblown sand. Those were all sand dunes. And uh, this is a really spectacular place. We actually spend a couple of nights here. And uh, yeah, this photo is taken from a place called Observation Point. Um, if, though, if you've been to Zion, there's a very famous hike up to something called Angel's Landing. Well, this little knob right here is Angel's Landing. And so from Observation Point, you actually look down on Angel's Landing. You actually go up. This Observation Point takes you right up to the canyon rim. And we do that hike uh, on the field trip. So bringing Google Maps uh, into this, right? Google Earth. Uh, we see St. George. Uh, Las Vegas is down here. There's the area of Zion. Okay, so then what we would do is take off and, and come up this way. There's, there's a place called Cedar City. And from there, I told you we travel west uh, across about half of the basin and range until we arrive at this place called the Reveille Range. And this dark stripes you see over here, those are lavas. And those lavas are being produced as this region is pulled apart. And uh, those lavas are pretty young. They're all younger than five million years. Anyway, we actually spend the night in the Reveille Range. And this is what it looks like. Um, nothing too dramatic. A lot of sagebrush, pinyon pine, and juniper. Anyway, this area has a lot of ash flow tuff, very large eruptions of ash that occurred starting about 25 million years ago, and then leading up to the latest eruptions of basalt, again, after about 5 million years. Moving west from the Reveille Range, still in the basin and range, right? And you can see from this, this Google uh, Earth photo, all of these ranges, 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 ranges with basins in between. You can tell how that region got its name. And of course, if you're driving along this part of the world, you just keep going up over ranges, down into basins, over ranges, down into basins. And we'll discuss how and why this region was formed. Anyway, we take off, we come this way, um, and we end up over here. This is Mono Lake, for those of you that know your California geography. And this is Long Valley, and this is Mammoth Mountain right here. And Long Valley is one of North America's large active caldera volcanoes. And I tried to draw the circle that it's about as big as that circle right there. And uh, that's one volcano. And we visit and stay at this area for a couple of nights. And here's one of the students on the field trip. And he's sitting on the rim of a canyon called Owens River Gorge. And down here, all of these rocks from the top to the bottom, and actually deeper than the bottom, is the Bishop Tuff. And the Bishop Tuff was erupted about 79,000 years ago um, when the caldera last erupted big. In the background here, this is called the White Mountains. That's another range of the basin and range. So again, Cenozoic activity in this region is, there's a lot of volcanism. So from Long Valley, when we finish up in Long Valley, we take a drive down Owens Valley, we end up over in Death Valley, and this is about where Death, Death Valley actually extends a little to the north here too, but this is the main part. This is the deepest part of Death Valley, and we actually come down here on our last day on our way back to Vegas, and um, we stop, and we go to the sand dunes, because there's a lot of wind and sand blows out of these old layers. Anyway, we, we, we stopped there and this is where they filmed uh, the uh, uh, sand dune scenes in Star Wars. This was several trips ago. Uh, 
the, the same trip where the guy was wearing the uh, parka in the hat up in uh, Mammoth, uh, by the time we get to Death Valley, it was uh, probably 100 degrees or so, and uh, these guys were pretty happy about that. So, pretty cool. Anyway, Death Valley, we're going to see all different ages of rocks. There's Precambrian all the way up to recent there. So to, final, to finish this off, um, this is a geologic time scale I got years ago in and in in, found it somewhere in a publication that talked about the major types of events that occurred in the western North America. And starting out here in the Precambrian, it says there was a rifting event. And that rifting event is actually what sent western North America, the westernmost part of North America, over and it got stuck somewhere onto the side of Asia. So we'll talk about why parts of California don't have those old rocks of the Grand Canyon underneath them. They're like Alaska. They have uh, accretionary terrains underneath them. Anyway, for most of the Paleozoic, from the Cambrian up to the Permian, in the areas that we'll be discussing, it's mostly just deposition of sediments both marine and non-marine at times, right? Then the Mesozoic starts, and then I move over here. This is just a, an enlargement of the upper part of this diagram. And for the most part, it's, it's deposition until we start to get an active margin uh, in western North America, which creates volcanoes in the Sierra Nevada bathlift during the Sevier orogeny. This is squeezing. This is subduction. This is going to be volcanism. So all the way up through the end of the Cretaceous is when you start, you get all of this basically squeezing. And then we get into the tertiary, and then it goes backwards. All of a sudden now the place starts to pull apart. And during that pulling apart in the early phase, something here called the ignimbrite flare-up. That's where a lot of the big ash flow tufts are coming from, like I showed you in the Reveille Range. Um, and then, of course, it's continuing to this day, right? There's pulling apart and some strike slip faulting going on, giving rise to the youngest volcanism and of course all of those normal faults and the creation of the basin and range. So this is a really good diagram to have with you and keep handy as we talk about stuff through the semester because it'll allow you to kind of put things in in simple perspective. And speaking of simple, one year I had a, a student go on the trip who sort of drew up what I thought was the most simple, straightforward stratigraphic column, right, that I'd seen. And this is it. So Precambrian, metamorphic and igneous rocks from 1.4 to 1.8. You're going to see these near Las Vegas and the Grand Canyon. For the Paleozoic, it's mostly just transgression, regression of seas, shallow seas, stable platform, right? We have a a, a passive margin. Then in the Mesozoic, the Sevier orogeny causes the squeezing, right? We have compression, we have mountain building, there's subduction, and the formation of thrust faults. And then in the Cenozoic, we have extension. Things are pulling apart, and of course, volcanism. Pretty cool. All right, so uh, that's it, and uh, next week, we're going to go look in detail at the uh, overview of the Western Geologic Provinces. Uh, hopefully the lectures won't be this long. I was trying to get everything in. So take that quiz, and uh, I'll see you next week.